the mysterious developing story about the Netherlands husband and his gang. And a story that begins with the most disturbing title, but comes to a very happy ending. Oh god, not like that though. Jesus, oh god, why did I say that? What, of all the words I could've used- Hello my snacks, welcome back. This is why you should never let me meet your parents. I, I say bad things without even trying. Anyway, quite a few stories today, so let's get into it. Beginning 16 days ago, I am getting suspicious of my husband on what he does every Saturday night. I have been with my husband for five years, to be precise. Married for two. I have known since, like, the first month of our relationship that he was the man for me. He always makes me happy, smile, be intrigued by him, is there for me when I need him, all of that stuff. But for a year now, he always goes with his friends drinking every Saturday and returns late. Late as in 6am or even later. I always wake up as he comes home. Though weirdly, he never sounds like he is drunk at all. Although I have not heard him being incredibly drunk as long as I have known him, so maybe that is a me thing. Anyway, these friends of his always come by our house 7pm sharp. I think there have been like three times or so that they haven't been here by 7 p.m. And when I mean 7 p.m. sharp, I mean not a minute later. And even when they have been here later, it has at most been like five minutes only. They never address me unless I speak to them first. And the three of them always speak rather quiet instead of a more party going spirit. It's really weird, as to me, you just get a weird vibe standing there with them. My husband is already dressed by the time they come, so they leave in like a minute or two. And then, as I mentioned, my husband comes back alone at 6am or so. At times, I have asked to come along because I grew suspicious they may be going to shady places, like a strip club or some sort, because my husband never sounded drunk, but also never went alone unless these friends covered for him. You see, my husband has cheated on me once, but it was in the first year of our relationship and at the time, he claimed to be immensely depressed because a lot of his family members died that year and he couldn't confide in me because I was abroad for most of that year unless there was a vacation that I then spent with him because I knew it was a hard time for him. I knew that while not a good reason necessarily, people make bad decisions when they are left to grieve by their own. So after some things, we both agreed to move on and forget all about it until this year when he all of a sudden made these friends of his and has been spending every Saturday night with them, supposedly, when I did break under the pressure of not knowing what he was doing. I did begin to ask things like, can I scroll to your phone for a second? Or almost interrogating him by asking what things he was doing the whole night and why he always came back so late. But he always casually gave the phone to me with no problems and I couldn't find anything even after scrolling on like five separate times. I knew I was going too far but he somehow didn't mind and said he had nothing to hide. However, this also is where the weird stuff begins to show itself. He doesn't have any real conversations with these friends of his beside the one message saying they are coming for him on Saturday night, every week between 6 and 6.30 p.m. They all message him this at this 30 minute interval every week and have no conversations nor a reply from my husband back to them of any sort. I have also asked to tag along, but this has almost always been denied. And when I was allowed to come, two times. We just went to the bar and drank like he said he would. His friends still didn't talk to me unless I spoke to them first and they barely drank anything. Maybe like three to five beers and that was it. Then at 5.30 we all went our separate ways and me and my husband would go home. Him also only drinking like four beers or so. Nothing of note happens, which just makes it feel even weirder. Especially when my husband just casually talks to me, but barely speaks to his supposed friends at all. And when they do, it almost feels like no energy is being put into the conversation. Just casual talk like you would do with a coworker. Nothing like anyone else I have seen go to a bar with friends do. There just isn't any excitement or fun to speak of. And the times where I do get to tag along, it always had to be a week in advance as well. Never on the day where his friends are at my door. I'm telling you, it is just the weirdest thing to me. And I don't know if I am just crazy because I think something is up or there actually is something going on that I just cannot get a grasp on. 
any advice would be appreciated very much. So a lot of jargon in this story, but to point the important things out. Strange group of friends. The only conversations they're recorded to have is, we're picking you up. They seem to barely drink anything when you're out with them. They need a week in advance notice if you want to come along. But despite all the signs, there is no evidence anywhere that your husband is doing anything sus. So what do the people think? Well, top comment at the time believed, Circle Jerk, Fight Club, what are some other options here if he's not cheating? Because that's where my mind goes. I do agree though that my mind also went to D&D. <laughs> I do believe is that common story where the creator of D&D, his wife accused him of cheating, followed him to wherever he was going suspiciously every single weekend. Turns out it was his mate's basement because they were designing Dungeons and Dragons together. Overall though, everyone is thinking it's cheating. What do you think though? You, you think it's cheating? As you ponder that, we'll move on to the update, which was just a day later and she starts to get into a bit of a, it's just a day later and this is where things get a bit more into the detective mode. Discovering secret apps with suspicious encrypted locations yeah, the story starts to turn into a bit of a Sherlock Holmes script. This is an update for the post I made yesterday on Reddit asking people what my husband could be doing on Saturday night every week. Just to address some things quickly, we have a shared account in terms of finances, so there's nothing going on there anyway. I have talked with his friends, and as I said before, they just feel generic and don't seem to want to talk to me since they never engage with me and when they answer me, they keep it short. Could be that is how they are, but it all just feels odd to me. We live in the Netherlands and not in the US. He met these new friends after having met them with his old drinking group of friends. I have talked with my husband twice on what he is actually doing when he goes drinking with them all the time and I haven't gotten any important info outside of just drinking at the bar and then going to a friend's house until they stop drinking response. The friends of his dress casually. No suits or anything like that. Make of that what you will too. When he goes out, he always uses cash and it is like 30 to 50 bucks normally that he brings. Though if he doesn't drink more than when I went with them, he couldn't possibly use it all up unless he is buying for them as well. He has no problems going on vacations, but if I ask if we can go on a Saturday to do something together, it always is a week in advance as well that he can do so and it probably has been about six times last year that he did so. Otherwise, we do stuff on Fridays. He is also kind of reluctant to do so if it's not a vacation. His friends have never really been in our house as they always stand by the front door. They don't seem to care to be in the house whatsoever. That proves it. They're vampires. My husband is a construction worker. The other three are IT, engineer, and a carpenter. No strange jobs or anything like that, or a job that would require them to work Saturday or Sunday. So after a lot of suggestions, I went with the safest, but also not really harming my husband in any way, shape or form one, which was also one of the first things recommended, which was checking for any addresses on Google Maps and seeing if there was anything on there. When he was asleep, I took his phone from the nightstand and went into the toilet and locked the door of said toilet, then opened the app only to find nothing on it. If there was anything ever on it was probably erased or lost to time in some sort of update or something, so that was no use. I searched some more until I found a navigation app that I don't remember seeing the last time I had his phone, which was about two months ago. I opened the app up and sure enough, there are about 20 locations searched for along with one marked, as in saved location for quick access. Most of the places were normal places you would go to, though, or places where I know he told me he would go for work, or a bar I know they go to, supposedly. The ones that actually caught my eye were five odd ones, and one of them was the marked one. The four searched for ones were of random houses one to two hours away from us, in really small places I didn't even know existed or barely remembered at all. I have no clue why these locations were searched for, if he went there, or if what his business there could be if he did go. So that was really odd. The marked place was in the forest, not too far from here. It is about a 20 minute drive, give or take. We have been there on multiple occasions, but I don't know why he would have one marked for navigation. He knows the forest pretty well because we have gone numerous times with just the two of us or with friends, so I have no clue what navigation could help him in a place like that. It seems to be a little outside of where the middle of that forest should be. Maybe I'm really anxious at this point, but it didn't seem to make much sense to me. Anyway, nothing else of use I could find on his phone, so I took the phone and put it right back on his nightstand. As far as I can tell, he was still sleeping soundly. 
He always was a heavy sleeper. When I woke up, he was gone off to work and I am now writing this just having finished cooking for the day. He will be home soon from the gym, about 30 minutes. I am thinking that if I still want to do more, I may have to either hire a PI or try to track them with a tracker or follow them myself, though that will have to wait until Saturday to make any progress. I also have not found anything that could indicate a different phone, bank account, or anything suspicious on our computer. So once again, at the moment, I am at a dead end. Current suspicions? This could be dogging or cruising or whatever it is called. What is cruising exactly? Uh, it's that. In case you were curious? <laughs> Five days later, there is another update where the OP gathers her friends, stumbles upon a whole group of strange men in the forest, gets confronted by one of the husband's friends, and it's possibly screwed her over in the final update, but uh, you'll see what I mean. So, where to even begin? It has been a few days since I last updated all of you. A couple of things have happened and I wanted to wait until after Saturday to post anything, though that got a little delayed. I got a lot of private DMs asking how I was doing or anxiously waiting for an update. And while I appreciate the sentiment, it did get annoying feeling even more pressured when I was already feeling about it all and constantly get DMs asking what I was doing or how this or that went, or if I did this or that. I know you all meant well, but it definitely didn't help after a certain point and just got annoying and pressuring. So, Thursday came along and I went to work like usual. People asked if I can drive, and I can, though my husband takes the car for work always, as he can be pretty far away depending on what construction site he is working at. So I take the bike to my job. It is about 20 minutes, so nothing special or anything. I got home, relaxed for about 30 minutes before I decided to call my husband's former drinking group and see if they knew anything more than I did about his new friend group or why he barely drinks with them anymore. It's probably every two to three months he goes out with them instead of his other friend group. Though this was always on Fridays and not Saturdays. One of the guys told me that my husband told them he just didn't have time to drink with both of them and he wanted to go with his new group drinking more than with the old one he always went with. So nothing of importance there. They also said they didn't know the three guys as they had been with a bunch of other guys who began sitting at their table acting pretty drunk. He said it was kind of irritating, but they were kind of drunk themselves at the time, so they didn't mind too much. They didn't see any of the guys after that, especially the three my husband is always drinking with now. He said he or they would probably recognize them, especially if my husband was with them. That's so interesting. They socially pickpocketed this husband from the old friend group. After that, the day went as normal until Friday came along and after work, I went to the marked spot that was on the navigation app of my husband. For anyone who was worried, I didn't go alone. I went with two of my best girlfriends and told them my husband could have potentially hidden something around here in the forest as a little game for Valentine's Day and that my Valentine's gift could be on the marked spot he showed me. Of course, this wasn't fully the truth, but I couldn't think of anything better to tell them. They found it odd, but they went along with it purely because it could be seen as a fun girl's day out and making a contest out of whoever could find the Valentine's gift first. The three of us walked around where the spot should be, a quiet part of the forest here where not a lot of people walk by. As it is not a hiker's path and there is nothing to do or really see except a flat clearing with some water and trees sprinkled here and there. I don't think I have seen people come by here at all when I have been here. Because as I said, there is nothing there to see or do. So it was kind of a surprise when I saw about 10 men standing around talking with each other there. It felt kind of awkward searching for probably nothing with all these people around. And at this point, I was thinking of just going home again and just try to make myself forget about everything. Edit one, uh, people have said this was suspicious and honestly, even with me wanting to be done with this and like roll over or hire a PI somehow, you all have convinced me that I shouldn't give up at least yet. No matter how much I want to, I guess just pull a little more. It began being even more awkward when I felt people staring at me and sometimes even blatantly doing so. This being while at the forest with the 10 random men. Suffice to say, we didn't find anything and I felt like the biggest moron thinking I had finally lost my mind. But after some more walking around the forest afterwards, we decided to go home again and on our way back, saw the youngest drinking friend of my husband. And to my shock, he actually began the conversation with me for the first time. He asked me how I had been and told me he was here for some late night fishing that he does here from time to time. It's honestly felt nice just having a small conversation for once with one of them. 
About five minutes of talking later, he left, and my girlfriends asked me if that was one of them. I said yes, and was surprised that he, for the first time, mind you, actually talked to me first and asked me how I was doing and just basic stuff like that. Opie adds on, oh, people have said this was super sus. I agree. I was so happy that one of them finally talked to me of his own accord while feeling he was interested into talking with me that I let this get to my head too much. I want to believe this was genuine, but with so many people saying it was not, I'm beginning to feel I was a fool for thinking so. Now, people are valid to suspect this because what does the husband do the day after? Saturday came along and my husband was anxious the whole day. He then told me it was because he had gotten into a verbal fight with his friends over a disagreement over something that they wouldn't show up anytime soon, if ever again. And sure enough, for the first time, aside from us not being there, they didn't show up. My husband and I snuggled under the blanket while watching a movie together Saturday, and honestly, nothing more has happened since then. At this point, as more edits go along, the OP starts to confess a hint of spiraling, like the constant subtle gaslighting of sorts, either through the lack of evidence they can find and the husband acting so casual about everything. It's just stressing her out too much, which is really sad to see. This is how I mentioned that it's likely she compromised herself by communicating and being seen by the youngest friend. Whether it's some sort of secret gay orgy thing that some people are suspecting, or a cult even, or some drug dealing that's now getting him in trouble. Either way, we find out in the latest update that was just today, the husband has been missing for the last week. My husband has now been missing for five days, today making six. Having been picked up by his so-called friends on Thursday the 16th of February around 9.30, the three of them came by our house asking to speak with him. He seemed really nervous, which was already weird to me, but he said he would be back shortly. Well, it has been five days already and no one has heard or seen anything of him. He just vanished. Last seen with his so-called friends. I filed a missing persons report on Saturday as I had to wait 24 hours before being able to call someone missing. I also called multiple friends and his boss, but he wasn't seen or heard from by them, or for even longer than I hadn't seen or heard anything from him. So that led nowhere. When he left, he went into the bathroom first to take a leak, and after he left, I went to brush my teeth. About two hours later, he still hadn't gotten back. I found his phone lying on the counter in said bathroom. As I just said, he still hadn't gotten back and I felt uneasy about it all for their sudden arrival on a Thursday night with all three of them no less. So I decided that maybe they had texted him to make amends or something like that. Now I know his password as he always said his phone is always available to me. So unlocking his phone was easy. The first thing I did was look at his messages if his friends did indeed text him or call him and all the way on the top of the messages was an open message with the caller ID only saying anonymous, but in Dutch, saying he would be there soon, around 15 minutes before his friends got there. This was obviously them on seemingly a different phone, maybe not wanting it to be traced back to them and therefore it appearing as anonymous as the caller ID. At this point, it seems clear these are not drinking buddies, but more than likely some people doing some kind of illegal activity or a crazy as hell gay group that are so close with each other they seem to leave their entire lives behind when they are close to being found out? No one just up and vanishes from life saying nothing and leaving behind everything without an insanely good reason for doing so. My husband had been quiet and easily irritated from Sunday all the way through Thursday when they came. And this was not like him at all as he has always been a positive and outgoing person around me even when something bad has happened for the most part. So this makes me think think that whatever was or is going on here, he either regrets it immensely, but was into it himself, or he didn't do this on his own terms. Meaning, he was potentially forced somehow into doing whatever they are or were doing. I made a screenshot of the message on his phone and sent that to my phone. It is not much, but you can clearly see there is no ID, and it was sent around 15 minutes before they came. Boot up. Yeah, that doesn't look sus at all. This, along with my husband's behavior the last couple of days, I have noted in his report when I went to the police. And now all I can do is wait, I guess. I doubt this was the update everyone was waiting for, and it will probably be the last as well. This is now way beyond anything strangers on the internet can give me advice on and is now in the hands of the police. With that said, uh, still a thank you for all of you who genuinely wanted to help me and gave advice. I still appreciate it. And it's on that note that makes me not too surprised that they ended up deleting their account.
Something tells me the pressure of all this and the stress and everyone spamming them with direct messages, yeah, they, they probably just wanted to be gone with it now and be at peace. Of course, with the last few stories not really being much info and then suddenly this dramatic update of sorts, people are suspicious that it's just a fake troll post of anything, which I can see where it can come to that suspicion. But then there are literal true crime podcasts that talk about stories far more insane than this and they're literally real. So it's fine if you don't want to believe it, that's okay. I would say though, though this is a legitimate argument to make, the fact that she's suspiciously bland and nonchalant about the possibility of a dead husband, etc. When you've spent the last couple of months in this constantly distrusting phase of being, where all the signs point to some sort of suspicious activity, but your husband's doing such a good job at proving you otherwise, yet constantly doing things that also prove that you are right, I can imagine that at this point she's just mentally shutting down. Which again, doesn't surprise me that she's kind of deleted her account and just left the internet about this. She's right. This isn't the classic help the internet situation anymore. This is literally the police issue now. Now that said, I do hope they come back at some point to give us an update on how it all goes down. But for now, that's where it's left off. It's possible this is something far more dangerous than just hooking up with strangers in a forest. One even suspects there might be something like CP and they vanished him because he blew the spot. Because if he says everything to his wife, they are all going to prison. They don't want to risk it. They were doing a crime. They're a big group of more than 10 people. What would another crime do if that means they don't get caught? That's one theory. Personally, I want to make it something wholesome where he's actually a secret superhero and they're his superhero buddies and they're secretly saving the world. Yeah, that that makes it more wholesome. He hasn't left you. He's just trapped in an alternate dimension right now. Yeah. <laughs> We now move over to relationship advice, with a story where its title is the worst thing that happens. So when you've read that, you're out of the woods. I, a 19 female, woke up with semen on my face, and my mum, 45 female, won't believe me. Yesterday morning, I, a 19 female, woke up to stuff all over my face and pillow. I didn't know what to do, but I just went to the shower and cried for two hours then washed all my sheets and pillows. I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not, since if I didn't wash them, I might have proof right now, but in the moment, I just wanted to be clean. Around the end of the day, I broke down and confided in my mom. She helped me calm down and was patient about it, but suggested I probably just dreamt it or mistook what it was. I tried telling her that I didn't dream it and that it was definitely what I thought it was, but she just told me to go get some rest and try to forget about it all. I feel like I'm going crazy and I'm on the edge around all the men in the house. I'm not sure who it could be and that is making me feel uns safe around all the men. Right now, the men in the house are my dad, 50 male, my three brothers, 22, 24, and 27, and my sister's boyfriend. But I know it's not him, as he is female to male. I'm scared in my own home, and my mom won't believe me, but I have nowhere else to go. All my friends have moved or are on vacation, and any other family live out of state. Is there any way to convince my mom I'm telling the truth? And in an update, later in that day, my sister is home from work now. The situation is worse than I thought. I talked with my sister. She is with me now, and will stay with me in my room till we can both get out of the house tonight. We will go stay with her boyfriend for the time being. She told me something nearly identical happened to her about a month ago, and she told our mom, and she told her the same thing to her that she did to me. I don't trust our mom anymore. I feel violated and angry. My sister didn't even come to me because mom gaslit her just like she did me. I just want to scream at her. I won't be replying for a while. Sorry. Me and my sister are packing and want to just comfort each other and get out of the house ASAP. Thank you everyone for the advice. Meanwhile, in the comments, people were linking things like an Amazon doorstopper that makes an alarm when it gets budged, just general suggestions for making yourself safe in a clearly unsafe environment. Another comment actually sadly nailed it on the head, but at the time it was still just a theory. So with all that said, we move on to the update of this story two weeks later, where thankfully the perpetrator's been caught and the mother is being punished severely. Me and my sister stayed with her boyfriend for a few days, then decided to take some advice from here and tell the family what happened. We told everyone through a group text, we didn't want to do it in person since there was just too much anxiety. Without going into exact details, me and my sister are now back in our home after some things went down. Mom has been kicked out and currently 27 year old male brother is in hospital. Dad and our other brothers have been a big help and support. Unfortunately, dad now has a court date, but have been told by the lawyers 
It's unlikely that our dad will face any time, so that's good. As for our brother, 27 male, it's unlikely police will do anything about him. But we have him out of our lives now, and we feel a lot safer in our own home. I'm just glad it's over and that me and my sister are protected in this house now, and that our dad and other brothers believed us. Thank you all for your support. So if that isn't clear enough in this story, essentially what seems to have happened is after dropping the bomb in a group text, the oldest brother's panicked, dad's been able to connect the dots finally, and has beaten the hell out of their own son. Hopefully a bit more. I don't know, maybe he just, you know, cut his willy off. Just something that teaches a lifelong lesson, you know? Thankfully, the mother was given no pity in her actions as well and kicked out immediately. Opie offers some more context as to people asking in the comments, why was she kicked out exactly? Did she know? Turns out, yes. From what I know, Mum was aware it was him. From what I've learned in the past couple of days is that he did something similar to a cousin years ago. Dad wanted him out, but Mum stuck up for him and promised to get him into therapy. I guess I now know why my dad and brother didn't get along. So when we texted that group text, Dad knew immediately and got a bit violent. Kicked Mum out and put the brother in hospital. This is one of the very rare, rare cases that I approve of a parent causing physical harm as a form of discipline. Some other info yes, dad is getting everything sorted for a divorce. I won't be seeing her again either and hope I never do. Glad my brother is in hospital, but just hope dad doesn't get in too much trouble for it. With some other comments, very thankful that it was definitely the dad whipping his butt. Overall, it's nice to end things there. On a rather positive note, despite the horrible experience, thank you for watching. Hopefully, unlike that last story, your mother actually deserves oxygen. And again, fingers crossed we find out what happens to the Netherlands woman and her husband. Anyway, you be good yourself Hopefully you aren't caught up in some sort of secret cult possible drug trafficking scheme. Remember to drink water and I'll see you next time. Bye bye